Chapter 24. Velveeta was still wearing the green scarf for his period on Monday. She waved the end of it at Travis when he walked into the door, not mad. Thanks for the donut holes, she said. You kept me from getting malnutritioned over the weekend. Are you okay? I don't have the bubonic plague or a broken leg, so yep, I'm okay. Pay attention, the teacher's talking. Travis faced front. She seemed more okay. Not 100%, but definitely better. But why was she still wearing the same scarf? You know what you said? She whispered, jabbing the back of his neck about how I won't let you help me. You've helped me all the time. How or when had he ever helped Velveeta? She never needed help. She helped him. And all he'd ever done was hurt her, like that time in the hallway. Plus the time he told her to quit bugging him. That wasn't helping. He snagged Bradley in the hallway before fourth period. Can you do me a favor, he asked. Don't sit by us at lunch, okay? I want to ask Velveeta about something. You got, you going to ask her? Bradley's eyes fired up. About the dance? Bradley, get off the dance. I just have to ask her something, and lunch is the only chance I'll get. The smile fell off Bradley's face. He took a step back and looked Travis over like he was calculating a complicated equation. Something private? Sort of, said Travis. Okay, Bradley nodded, his face serious. I understand. At lunchtime, Velveeta said, hey, look, Bradley's sitting with Reed and Jake. Is he done with us already? Well, I told him to leave us alone today, said Travis. Why? What do you mean this morning when you said I helped you? He rushed the words before he chickened out. How? Velveeta picked up the end of the green scarf and fingered the fringes. She squeezed them together in a ponytail and then spread them out. Helping you learn words is the best thing, best thing that happened to me in the last 44 days, she said. Travis counted back. 44 days? That would be sometime in August, around the time they moved to Russet. Velveeta's pizza sat untouched on her plate. Did you ever have a place that was really good? She talked down to her scarf. Some place you could go and everything was sort of okay? Yeah, said Travis. Do you still go there? No, we moved away from it. The silence stretched. Travis finished his pizza. Do you have a place like that? He asked. I did, said Velveeta. Now I don't. All my scarves used to be there. Now I can't go to the place anymore and all the scarves are gone except for this one. Whatever she was saying and not saying, he could feel it all the way inside. It hurt. Velveeta kept staring at her scarf as the minutes ticked by. Are you going to eat your pizza? No, she said. You can have it if you want. I don't. Just seems like maybe you should eat something. She looked up at him and her eyes were the softest he'd ever seen them. She didn't smile, but she stretched her lips a bit. You're nice, Travis, she said. Really, really nice. The bell rang and she got up. Travis followed, careful not to crowd her. She threw her whole lunch in the trash. Her pizza lay upside down on top of the other garbage. That evening, Grandpa left for parent-teacher conferences at 7.35, and Travis paced the house from 7.36 until 7.49. Then he went out in the yard. The breeze ran grease bumps across his skin. He traced the steps of the phantom dog around the inside of the fence. The last of the dog dookie had disintegrated. Travis paced the yard one way and then turned and circled in the other direction. What would McQueen say about him? What if Grandpa swore or lit up a cigarette in McQueen's office? When had it lights turn into the driveway, Travis ran back inside and jumped on the couch. He put his feet on the coffee table and grabbed the remote. The TV flickered on just as the front door opened. Hey Trav! Grandpa went into his room. Travis stared at the TV, holding his breath. Wasn't he going to say anything? After a few minutes, Grandpa came back out, picked up the remote and clicked the TV off. He set something with a click on the coffee table. Roscoe's collar beat up brown leather with the rabies tag still attached. You want that? Grandpa lit the cigarette. Travis picked it up, turning it over in his hands. The inside was greasy, the feel of Roscoe still there. I should have given it to you a while ago, but well, I didn't. He kicked back the recliner and took a deep drag. So this McQueen fellow, he's taking quite a shine to you. Yeah? Travis Pels thudded in his ears. What did he say? Said he's never seen a kid try so hard. Said you've got an A in his class and you've been coming in early to do extra work. Travis ran his fingers across the stitches in the old leather collar. And that Miss Gordon, you have a D in her class right now, but she thinks she'll do better the second half of the quarter. 
He cleared his throat and Travis looked up. Grandpa cleared his throat another way and tapped the long ash of his cigarette into the ashtray. Trav, he said, I know it doesn't help much now, but it's okay. Travis said it fast. I should have known. Grandpa stubbed out his cigarette, closed his eyes, and leaned his head back. He swallowed, his Adam's apple jerking up and down. Then he cleared his throat again and looked Travis in the eye. I've been keeping that collar in my room to remind me why I shouldn't drink, but I don't need it now. I look at you and I can remember pretty good. Velveeta on Monday. I almost told Travis things about Trailer World today. Maybe he really is an undercover cop. Sometimes he says exactly the right thing and it almost cracks me open. I stopped by the library on my way home and Connie gave me three DVDs. She said they came in as a donation, but they're duplicates and I can have them. I said that's real nice, but thanks to Sylvia, I don't have anything to watch them on. One of them is Running on Empty. I love that movie. I remember the last time I saw it. Calvin made popcorn and afterward he gave a big lecture about boys and staying out of trouble. I loved it when he lectured me. When I got home tonight, the Madre was freaking because Jimmy said he's moving to Texas. He has said that 78 times before, so why would this time be different? Tonight is parent-teacher conferences. The Madre has never gone once. She says me and Jimmy got it backward, that he should be the smart one so he can make us millionaires and I could stay home and take care of her. Instead, it's me that's smart and that just means I'm going to leave her and she'll be all alone. I want her to be right about that and I feel super bad that I want her to be right about that. If I leave her, will I turn out like Sylvia, rich and mean? 